Impressive, is it not? Fit for a leader, meant to show influence and the burden of it. It is where the Inquisition will sit in judgment. Where you will sit in judgment. Who will I be judging exactly? Those who have done wrong. You will know of them, at the very least. All this presumes they have survived their initial encounter with you, of course. Do I really need to oversee even more death? I'm nearly at capacity. I share your distaste for more bloodshed, but it needn't come to that. The Inquisition's sovereignty is derived from the Allies who validate it. You are both empowered and bound. Justice has many tools. If their application is clever, execution may even seem merciful by comparison. Is there anyone I should judge? Take the throne when you're ready. We will bring him before you. You recall Gerion Alexius of De Winter. Ferelden has given him to us as an acknowledgement of your aid. The formal charges are apostasy, attempted enslavement, and attempt in assassination, on your own life, no less. De Winter has disowned and stripped him of his rank. You may judge the former magister as you see fit. I remember what would have happened to Thedas if his treachery had succeeded. I couldn't save my son. Do you think my fate matters to me? Will you offer nothing more in your defense? You've won nothing. The people you say the acclaim you've gathered, you'll lose it all in the storm to come. Render your judgment, Inquisitor. You swore to the mages you'd help them. I will have you uphold that promise. Fiona will take charge of you. Any knowledge, favor, or coin you own will go towards the Major's future. A headsman would have been kinder. Inquisitor, meet Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall. Though I don't use that title much anymore. Hawk, the Inquisitor. I figured you might have some friendly advice about Corypheus. You and I did fight him, after all. You've already dropped half a mountain on the bastard. I'm sure anything I can tell you pales in comparison. Oh, I don't know. You did save a city from a horde of rampaging Kunari. I don't see how that really applies. 
Or is there a horde of rampaging Kunari I don't know about? There's a Kunari. He almost qualifies as a horde all by himself. Fortunately, he's on our side. So, then, what can I tell you? Varric said that you fought Corypheus before. Fought and killed. The Grey Wardens were holding him, and he somehow used his connection to the Darkspawn to influence them. Corypheus got into their heads, messed with their minds, turned them against each other. If the Wardens have disappeared, they could have fallen under his control again. So Corypheus has the Venatori, the Red Templars, and now possibly the Wardens as well. Wonderful. I didn't come this far just to give you bad news. I've got a friend in the Wardens. He was investigating something unrelated for me. His name is Alistair. The last time we spoke, he was worried about corruption in the Warden ranks. Since then, nothing. Corypheus would certainly qualify as corruption in the ranks. Did your friend disappear with them? No. He told me he'd be hiding in an old smuggler's cave near Crestwood. If you didn't know about Corypheus, what were you doing with the Wardens? The Templars in Kirkwall were using a strange form of lyrium. It was red. I'd hoped the Wardens could tell me more about it. Corypheus had Templars with him at Haven. They looked like they'd been exposed to the lyrium you describe. Hopefully, my friend and the Wardens will know more. I'll take any lead I can get at the moment. Good. I'll do whatever I can to help. Corypheus is my responsibility. I thought I'd killed him before. This time I'll make sure of it. Inquisitor. You said you thought you killed Corypheus. The Grey Wardens had him imprisoned. They used my father's blood in a ritual to seal Corypheus inside. But he could still reach out and influence the Warden's thoughts. He sent them after me. And I didn't just think I killed him. When the fight was done, he was dead on the ground. <laughs> Maybe his tie to the Blight somehow brought him back, or... Maybe it's all to Vinter magic, but he was dead, I swear it. And where did you go after the mages rebelled? I heard the Chantry might be sending an exalted march to Kirkwall to put down the rebellion. We thought that leaving would save lives and force the Divine to divide her forces to hunt for us. But all the circles were rising up by then. We helped a lot of them take that final step. I'd like to know more about Anders. What was he like? It's not like the minstrels make it out to be. He's not just a monster. Or a hero. Or maybe he's both. He was trying to change the world. He knew it couldn't happen peacefully. I heard you had family and friends in Kirkwall. Where are they now? When the Wardens began acting strangely, I had my friend Aveline take my brother out of the Free Marches. I'm never really happy leaving Anders alone. Once I realized Wardens were acting strangely, no choice. I've seen Corypheus affect Anders' mind before. If he was involved, I couldn't risk it happening again. I assume Varric's been feeding you information about the Inquisition. What did he say about me? Only good things, I promise. I was a little surprised, actually. Varric isn't one for religion in general, but he thinks highly of the Inquisition. I think the exact phrase was, has a good shot at fixing Blondie's mess. We'll talk later. I'll meet you at Crestwood. Need something? I read your tale of the champion, and I have a few questions. That's a pretty common reaction. Go ahead. In the book, you say that first Enchanter Orsino turned himself into a giant monster made of corpses. How? Why? Another time, Varric. 